All right, hi. Start, start. Yep, we're there. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, perfect, we're there. So, hi, welcome to American Hydroponics uh, webinar. We hold monthly webinars. Um, they are free to the public, and today we're going to do a little different webinar. We are here in our commercial greenhouse. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Humboldt County, and you can see it's nice and bright and sunny, and you can look all around. You can see the beautiful cucumbers growing, and you can see all the little baby cucumbers on them. They'll be ready to harvest, I'm guessing, in probably about a week or so, you won't believe how big these cucumbers get in that time. And then, of course, we have all of our NFT, all of our leafy green produce over here. And if you've been with us any amount of time, you'll know that um, out here in our HCOE greenhouse, we grow a large variety of things. We grow arugula, basil, lettuce mix, a bunch of different types of lettuce. We grow cilantro, parsley, chard, um, kale. Uh, all sorts of things, and you can look back and you can see all of the beautiful colors here in all of the leafy greens. So, and what's great about this produce is we have today actually with us um, one of the recipients, one of the customers of our produce here, and this is um, Mikhail Bessillon. Uh, he is a chef at Foley Deuce here in Humboldt County, and Foley Deuce is probably the highest end restaurant we have here in Humboldt County. It's a wonderful restaurant. They have a lot of really beautiful produce and, and things that go into their meals. And they focus primarily on organic and local produce. And it's something that we value. We put a tremendous value up here on, in Humboldt County. So Bully Deuce has been around for years as a restaurant. And for the last couple of years, as Mikhail has been the chef there, we put a really big emphasis on local. So we supply Mikhail with um, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Um, every every week, we uh, let him know what's fresh and available, and we supply him with um, what what we have that's ready to harvest. So um, we're going to talk to Mikhail a little bit and and ask him some questions about what he finds valuable. But a lot of what this webinar today is going to be about is not just finding out about what does a chef who literally twice a week we deliver to Mikhail, what does he find valuable? And, and what is he looking for in produce? But it's also things like how can you market your produce? And we've done separate webinars on that, but in particular, um, how do you market your produce? So before we get into it with Mikhail, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, when you're just starting up, a super easy way to market your produce is through a CSA, which is a community-sponsored agri um, agriculture. And um, you all participate in CSAs as a restaurant? We do not go up more with the farmers. And the Directly local, with the farmers, yeah. But as a restaurant, first we'll be looking for CSAs to see like, if there's farmers we can work with. For sure. and, and what do you like about CSAs? It's local, it's seasonal. It's mostly fresh. Yeah, yeah, it's seasonal. That's a big one for yeah. the CSA. Yeah, that's nice. Because seasonal for us means like a better flavor, um, also cheaper because yeah. if you buy a vegetable or leafy green which is not in season, you're gonna pay the price for it. Yep. So yeah, we're looking for those things and like the more flavor, the more goodness. So, yeah. yeah. What about farmers markets? There are another one. So we have CSAs. And what those are, the community-sponsored agriculture is where you pre-sell your shares, and the farmer delivers to the shareholders whatever is, is ready at that time of harvest. The farmer's markets are where you actually go to the market and pick and choose what you want at that time. Do you do, do you We all? do work with both. We more, more mostly farmers market because some of the farmers are there, mm -hmm. and we know they're going to be available to sell us. Yeah. The farmers working with a CSA, we know they have their already share they need to provide, so they might not have the produce ready for us. However, farmers market, they are here like pretty much every week, and we know like we can go at the farmer market or call them and like find information and they can deliver yeah. after farmers market. And it's also great for the farmer because like whatever he has left over, we can like buy it. That's perfect. You won't go back to this project. That's good for you and good for the farmers. Yeah, folks. exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, so, so there's CSA, there's farmers markets, there's selling to local grocery stores, which we also do. We sell to um, some grocery stores here, particularly the basil is a great one, and we sell at Roots On, as we mentioned. So, um, 
I could grab a, a basil here. You know, when we do it hydroponically, right, you can sell it and look at those. Um, the roots are really beautiful. And the nice thing about selling it with the roots on one, it's easier for you as a farmer to deal with it that way. But two, it's nice for um, the, the retail store, the grocery store to have it because the produce lasts longer. Do you prefer it with roots on or we roots do. off? We do because we're not sure like when we're gonna use the produce, like if it's for lettuce or basil, and we're able to water it for a couple of days yeah. without nutrients, but it will right. still be water, right. and we will have the produce fresh from the roots. Right. So yeah, it's much better for us. So. Yeah, very good. So so we've talked about CSAs, farmers markets, taking to um, grocery stores, but now we're really gonna kind of focus more on in the restaurant mm -hmm. and. Um, what do you look for as a chef? How, how long have you been a chef, first of all? I've been a chef for like 15, 16 years now. Okay. And all uh, over? And all over. I'm where, from, where I'm for from, example? I'm from France. I try work in Ireland. I work in Spain. I work here in the U.S. It's been like now two years, but I've been, I've been in the U.S. before. Mm -hmm. um, I love to like work with a new product that I don't know about and trying to find like the flavor of the yeah, yeah, yeah. and like. So with hydroponics, there is so much like imagination possible. Mm -hmm. Like cucumbers for me, is, cucumbers usually it's like in July, and yeah. like having cucumbers in February or March is like, yeah, great. Yeah. What can yeah. I do with that and make it fresh with my other products? And these cucumbers are particularly delicious. Uh, they yeah, are. Yeah, they're yeah. really, really good. That's the thing with hydroponics. Like you guys are able to control the summer weather mm -hmm. and the. Uh, crispiness or the cleanliness too because for us like if we get something from you guys hydroponic we don't have to clean it that yep. so which is like less water to use for us yeah. uh, compared to a regular farm. Were hydroponics popular at all in you said France or Ireland or Spain? You've been uh, it's getting this. it's getting there but I have it's my really first time working yeah. with hydroponics. Yeah. yeah. Um, I knew about it, and I didn't know any farmers working with it. Um, so, so what else, um, in a chef, as a chef, and for a restaurant, particularly a high-end restaurant, what else do you look for? In when you're looking to provide a very high-end, delicious meal well, to somebody. Yeah. So, what are you looking for in produce? I'm looking for like uh, a good flavor produce, which hydroponic is able to create because you guys are controlling the product uh, compared to a farmer like the weather the product, uh, the freshness of the product because of the root like we talked about earlier and also the, um, the cleanliness like yeah. I was saying like it's less time for us to clean or even like peel a cucumber we can even use the skin sometimes yeah. because it's not as bitter as right. it would be in the, as it, as outside yeah what about um, the obvious one is price. What's the price point? Would you pay more for flavor, for local, for fresh, than you would just buying it, for example, like from a Cisco, which is a large food distributor. Yeah. They, they primarily, Cisco here in our area, primarily delivers to institutions, so it's a large, large distributor that doesn't get any other product. I would be paying the price for flavor. You, you would pay the price I for I would flavor. do like 49, for, uh, sorry. 51% flavor to 49% yeah. yeah. price. Um, because I'm I'm looking to like having like a nice condensed flavor, which Cisco is not able to provide. Right. And so and also local because like seasonal and like hydroponic is able to like extend that season, but yeah. we are still staying like seasonal. Sure. And the very California season. Yeah. <laughs> season Seasons is a lot different in California yeah, than yeah. they are in. Michigan, for example. For example yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like, we're able to like, extend the, the season for a month or two, and that's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite hydroponic products that you've got from us? Basil. Yeah, basil. The lettuce is great. When you have a nice head of lettuce, you basically don't have to damage by washing it because it's hydroponic. That's a great. That's what beautiful heads mm -hmm. we brought yeah, you the other yeah. day. The other day they were great. Yeah, they nice were really color. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the cucumber, the tomatoes, and yeah. that are great. Yeah. Yeah, we're just going to plant some more of those little old sun tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Those were nice. Yeah. 
yeah, if you have a vine crop plant or if you're looking for anything, um, these cucumbers that we're talking about are really good and they're soccer teas and we get our seeds from Johnny Seeds or we have the little sun gold tomatoes and they're, you know, bit, slightly bigger than a marble. They're just a little cherry tomato, but they're really, they're orange colored and they're really sweet and, and delicious. Um, what are some of the more unusual things? I know I've given you, so the nice thing that the relationship that we have with Mikhail and Fule Deuce is that we can try a whole bunch of different types of things, right? Because our greenhouse is an R&D greenhouse, so we can try all sorts of different um, products. We tried papicha once, which we had never used before, but the beautiful thing is I can give it to Mikhail <laughs> and ask him to try something with it. So That was an interesting Yeah, one. what are some of the more unusual uh, The stevia, I never worked oh, with stevia. the stevia leaves. Mm -hmm. That was interesting to work with. Yeah. Um, there was culantro. Yep, culantro was right. a great discovery. Yeah. 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 I knew cilantro, but like cilantro that you can cook with, mm -hmm. it doesn't damage the meat from the flavor, so that was great. And um, culantro is one that's used in a lot of Puerto Rican cooking and South Asian yeah, cooking. Yeah, yeah. Um, it has a different different flavor, um, but it, it's, it was fun. It was fun to grow. It was yeah, fun. Yeah. It was fun to use, for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I, because she brought me the produce, and I was like, oh my god, what am I going to yeah. do with that? And I tried it, it was very strong. Yeah, and then uh, once I start cooking, we were like, "Oh yeah, that's a good one." Yeah, yeah. So we we that's have a unique relationship with Pole Deuce, and it's great for us. But you can also try some of this yourself with your own system. Is set aside one or two channels and try and plant something unusual or um, something a little bit different, and then take it to your chefs. Um, chefs are super creative, and they love to try something new and different, and can make anything taste delicious, right? So you might bring them a papicha which is yeah. a, really something unusual that we had never really heard of before, but we took it to Miguel and he was able to use it and, and work with it. So, so trying something different and making a relationship with your local chef of some nice restaurants then allows you some R&D and you might find that it works you know, it's something that you might have a market for, like arugula. Yeah. I think we only first started growing arugula for you guys. Four full okay. Years. And, and it's worked out great. It's good. Perfect. It's nice and crispy. Yeah. And it's fresh. And yeah. The taste is, it, I the taste think, is great. I think the taste of our arugula that we grow here, and we just grow a standard arugula, is far superior to arugula you get. Yeah, you know, for sure. From anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you're, you're able to control the growth of it. Yes. So if you want baby arugula, we get baby arugula. Exactly. Because sometimes the farmer is like, yeah, well, some leaf were baby, but yeah. some other were growing up. Yes, so you can. You can really customize what you want to grow for your chef. And if they have a particular demand, like baby arugula, you know, that's only three inches high or something like that, you can do that. And the nice thing for you as a grower is you can turn over your crops a lot quicker in something like that. Um, what what else do you look for in produce? You look for local, look for seasonal flavor, um, able to be working with like hydroponic is great because I do love a, a farmer product, but sometimes it's not the right shape. We have to feed it, um, so that's a hydroponic is able to control that a bit too. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's great. What about packaging? That's another question a lot of people ask. The packaging, packaging is a little bit challenging. It's challenging depending on the space of the recipient. Mm -hmm. uh, having the root is great for flavor and uh, keeping it longer. However, we need the space to storage it. Right. Um, so the packaging sometimes is difficult. You need to like find a way with your the, the people you work with mm -hmm. to like find the best way possible. Yeah. You guys are giving us the, the big like black right. trays. 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 Yeah. That works great because we have the space for it. Right. But as soon as we put the produce in the fridge, like we have the space for it, so we need to like cut it down and make sure we use it like exactly. Another thing that Mikhail taught me was we had cut our lettuce mix and our arugula and put it into a bag. And we gave it to them in bags, but then we found out the bags receiving receiving the bags is great. But however, to uh, I'm putting them in the fridge, and my my people sometimes are like pushing them around, so smashing, uh, smashing yeah. them a bit, destroying which is, some of the produce. which is the lettuce, so it's very fragile. Right, right. So yeah, that's a, that's a thing we need to consider in the future, like how to keep the produce fresh and keep it 
to uh, being damaged in the future. Yeah. And and what's important about that is is talking and having a great relationship with your chef and with your customers yeah. to find out what works for them and what doesn't work for them. Um, I know that Mikhail, when we were giving him a lot of lettuce mix, gave us the kind, the particular, um, those uh, crates that you yeah. like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those were great. Mm -hmm. those were great. Um, because then we could cut them and, and, and put them directly into the crates, and then he could take that and put them directly into a space he knew he had for his, in his cooler. So it's, it's that communication with your chef, that communication with your customer to understand what works for them best. Because yeah. you don't want to create more work for either one. No, yeah. No. Yeah. So, um, what else can we, now I'll just ask you personally, as far as what we deliver to you, mm -hmm. what else can we do to make your job easier at the restaurant and, and make it a, a easier, faster, smoother transition than you would see our flavors? What can the we big, do? And we are doing it, but the big thing is communication. Yeah. Because as a restaurant, like we can have, like yesterday was one nice day, yeah. like it was a crazy day for us. So. Right. At one at one moment in time, we're gonna need a lot of produce, and the next we won't. Right. So communication and planning, because hydroponic is easy to plan like four weeks ahead. Right. But we are talking about press right now yeah. in the next four weeks or five. Um, and the, yeah, the packaging and like yeah, that's that's an really important thing. Yeah. yeah, and and trying something new. So um, Mikhail came over to to the office and to the greenhouse the other day. And we had kind of asked them, what are you looking for? And so you gave us a whole list of unusual it. things. Uh -huh. Chocolate, mint, Thai basil, purple basil. Did you ask for cinnamon? Lemon basil. Lemon basil. Lemon basil. Uh, we might think about cinnamon basil. Cinnamon in the basil, yeah. <laughs> uh, valeria. Valeria. Angelica. Angelica. And some of these things I had never heard about, but, but it just takes a little bit of research and going into your seed distributor and finding out where they're there. Seed packets are super inexpensive. You buy one, you try it out, and you see how do, how does this work. You can kind of you can kind of see how long does it take to grow. What is the flavor like? Is it something that you know your customers would like? So having that kind of communication with someone as creative as Miguel, who can kind of envision what that might look like and, and already knows maybe what the herbs are like, is great to form that kind of relationship. So as you're looking to market your produce. You really want to keep in close communication with your customers and particularly someone who has that real keen eye and taste as to what they're looking for. Um, so produce managers, uh, chefs at restaurants, um, farmers markets, if you go to farmers markets, listen to your customers, hear what they say about it. So what else? What else would you like? I would think like maybe teaching your community. Oh yeah. Because People know farmers, well, I'm starting to know farmers, but hydroponic is totally a different way. Um, I'm thinking maybe bringing my staff in to let them yeah. know like how the produce is grown and like Great. how long it takes and like uh, your work basically like. And how beautiful. And how beautiful it is too, yeah. It is. It's, a great, it's a great way to grow things in less space because the compared to a farmer. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, teaching people would be a big uh, impact for sure. Yeah, we especially when the cucumbers, you really should, Mikhail, bring them in when the cucumbers in another week or two when the cucumbers are really starting to harvest to bring them in mm -hmm. and then you can see them. And also with kids, I mean, yeah. I'm working with schools, right. and that's, that's a great way to like let people know like your work and yeah. Then, yeah. in the future expand and like. Yeah, yeah, and get and get more and more growers because you really can grow year round. Um, with the exception of the fire, I think we yeah. supply you every week with yeah. stuff, some you know some stuff. So, um, so that's that's pretty much it. We wanted you to hear from someone who uses our produce every day, right? Pretty much, pretty much every day. We deliver twice a week <laughs> and uses it every day. So. Um, we wanted you to hear from that and hope you enjoyed this time and, and thank you very much Michelle, well, for making well, your day, especially well, when you're supposed to be at the restaurant preparing I'm dinner right down. now. I'm doing but, no um, but, but on your screen you should see coming up on March 15th will be our next webinar. Now we'll be talking about now, especially you can see with this beautiful weather, this seasonal change in your crops. What do you need to do with the seasonal change in your crops because now it's you know, right now the basil takes about seven weeks to grow to a full head, but we're starting to switch because of all the sunlight and the days are getting longer and warmer. We'll get to, in our area, 
um, where the basil will take about five weeks to grow the full head. So this transition is starting to happen now, and how do you work that rotation in as a hydroponic farmer? Um, and then also, uh, if you've signed up for our seminar, that starts next week. We're full, but we hope to see you there. Um, if you've signed up, our next seminar will be January and 28th and 29th, and it'll be right here in this greenhouse. And then I think the last thing we have there is we always put a special offer on the end of all of our webinars. And the special offer this month is our new, our rebranded. While these products aren't new, we've been manufacturing these products for 20 plus years. These products are, it's a five part nutrient um, regimen that is specifically designed for flowering annuals. Um, and you can buy one or you can buy all five of the parts, but there's free shipping from now until the end of March um, and that should show up on there and I think if there's not a code on there we can get you the code for your free shipping and that includes the uh, Grow Magnum, the Big Bang Bloom, the Supernova, the Dark Energy and Epic Boost. Again that's um, to the nutrients and the additives for flowering. So thanks very much. Um, thank you very much for thank y'all for taking the time and um, we will see you all here next uh, next month, same time for a new webinar. Thanks.